On today's video, I'm sharing with you all about the cost of living in Costa Rica and how I managed to live more frugally. So I've been living in Costa Rica for a year and a half consistently, and there's a lot that I've learned in the process of not having to spend too much money. When you arrive here, things can appear to be pretty expensive. When you go to the grocery store, uh, when you look for a house online, you can be surprised by the cost of things. Costa Rica literally means rich coast, and it that, that word rich <laughs> signifies something. A lot of people come here and struggle financially and so it's important to be able to know how to live in a more affordable way and in a way that's more convenient for your needs. So the first subject that I'll touch on is housing. Now of course if you look online you will see easily villas that are $3,000 a month. It's a pretty standard price especially when you're looking near the beach. Um, Two, three thousand is common. Of course, most of us cannot afford that or simply don't want to pay that. Um, you can, you definitely can find houses in Costa Rica that cost $500 a month. How? Well, by the beach is a little more challenging, although it's not impossible, you can. But generally, in more rural areas, a little higher up in the mountains, if you go a little further away from the beach, even just 20 minutes away, you can start to find things that are a lot more affordable. And oftentimes, these are places where people are more settled, more permanently settled, um, living in expat communities with children. And so oftentimes, if you're looking for to settle more in Costa Rica in a permanent way, uh, going a little further from the beach into places that are more affordable can be an interesting way to connect with other people of the community. And so the best ways to find houses are to look on Facebook. This is my number one suggestion. If you don't have Facebook, then ask someone that does. There are so many groups that share rentals. Um, some of them are more luxury rental groups and some of them are more groups that share all kinds of stuff that are not necessarily rentals, but that's often where you can find the cheap stuff if you filter through them or if you search keywords in areas that you're looking for or simply the word rent, you can you can um, find some, some houses. And it's not because something was posted uh, several months ago that it doesn't mean it's not for rent. So don't only look at new listings, do consider listings that were written a while back, reach out to the person and ask them if it's available, there's a chance it might be. Of course, if you're looking for long term, it's going to be a lot more affordable than if you're looking to come here for only a couple months. The busy months are from December to April, about. That's when prices skyrocket. That's when people make their money. And so if you're looking to come January, February, you are going to pay a lot more. If you're looking to live here, well, then that's when you can negotiate to pay something that's a lot more affordable. Oftentimes, the price that's listed isn't necessarily the price that is um, you're going to pay. It's quite negotiable oftentimes, especially if you're looking for long term. One thing to be really mindful of is the mold issue in Costa Rica. Because of the humidity level and the extensive rainy season, a lot of houses have mold issues in them. And so it's really important to actually visit the house physically to inspect the air quality, inspect the airflow, and see if this is a place that is healthy for you. Because if there isn't adequate airflow in the house, not only will the house itself be moldy, your clothes will, your everything really will. It's a really common problem for everything to get moldy in Costa Rica. And so we have to find ways around that. Dehumidifiers, of course, are great ways. If you're coming here in the rainy season, it's a must. So I think that pretty much covers the topic of housing. Of course, if you have questions, you can comment down below. If you appreciate this video, you can also like and subscribe in the meantime. Now moving on to cars. Uh, once again, the car prices can vary a lot. Cars in Costa Rica are very expensive. Uh, I don't know if this is still the case, but for a while they were no longer importing new cars to Costa Rica, so everything that you could buy was only used. And the demand is quite high from expats that come here in November, December, January looking to buy a car. And so it's easier, of course, to buy a car if you're looking in May, April than it is to buy, to buy a car if you're looking at the end of the year, simply because a lot of the people come, they buy a car for for the dry season and then they sell their car when they leave. If you're looking to buy a car not in San Jose but more wherever you're living, then of course you have a smaller selection and cars are gonna be more expensive. So the best option to save on buying a car is to look in San Jose. The way that you can find the listings for a car is the website crautos.com or on Facebook Marketplace. I prefer Facebook Marketplace only because on CR Autos, you can't search the exact destination. You can only search by province and the provinces are quite big. So you actually don't really know where the car is located, but that's how I found my car. And if you're looking in San Jose, at least the province is likely to be more concentrated. 
Of course, you always have to be asking the people where are you located first. One thing to note about buying a car is that the gas here is very expensive, a lot more expensive than in North America. And so you wanna make sure that your car is fuel efficient. My car is a turbo diesel car. The reason I got that car was specifically because of how fuel efficient it is. Of course, these cars are harder to find. It requires a lot more patience. So if you come to Costa Rica in a rush and you're looking to do everything quickly, it, you're never gonna find the best thing. You're not gonna find the best house. You're not gonna find the best car. Here, it's pure vida. It's pure life. It's take your time. It's allow things to flow. Be patient, surrender. There's a lot of surrendering. The reality is that having a car in Costa Rica is, is the most frustrating thing because cars are always breaking down, the roads are bad, the mechanics are terrible, and you're, it's just very hard to maintain a car in excellent condition. So be mindful of that. You can run into a lot of costs in the long run if you're not getting a car that's decent. We actually got a car that's a 1991 um, Mitsubishi Montero and at first I was like, really, I'm buying that old of a car, but actually older cars have a much stronger carcass and our car can go up any hill. It is the most amazing car for like four x four functions. And by the way, you absolutely want to get a four x four. I really don't recommend not getting one unless you're planning on only living in the city uh, and never really going out because I mean, you can find yourself crossing rivers Every, everywhere in Costa Rica is challenging for, for a car. So just be mindful. If you're not, if you're living in San Jose, fine. Otherwise, get a 4x4. And of course, be mindful of the brand that you're buying. Um, I've been told that Suzuki's are not great. They're the cheapest cars. So if you are on a budget, Suzuki, you'll, Suzuki is probably what you'll be able to afford. Just know that you might end up having to spend a lot of money on replacement parts. Um, Toyotas are your number one car brand in Costa Rica for durability, for strength and everything. Of course, they are the most expensive, which is why we got a Mitsubishi, which was in second place for quality price. Our car costs us around 8,000 US dollars. So just to give you any idea of the price. But of course, you can pay a lot more than that. That's actually on the lower end for a decent car. You can pay less if you're buying a Suzuki, but if you're getting a, a higher end car, it's going to be several thousands of dollars. And if you are considering driving your car down from the US or Canada, be mindful that Costa Rican tax is extremely high on imported goods. And so you will find yourself spending very, very high numbers in, ta in import taxes. So just be mindful, do your research before you decide to drive down because there is a chance you might have to leave again. The last topic I will cover is food. So if you go to the regular grocery store, you will see that food is expensive. Um, especially everything that's imported. Costa Rica taxes imported goods at a very high amount. So anything that's made here is a lot more affordable. If you buy a bag of Lay's that come from the US, it's gonna be a ridiculous price. If you buy some chips that are Costa Rican, they're gonna cost you much, much, much better price. One way that you can really save is by shopping in the what they're called ferias, markets, mercados. But if you search on Google, it's usually feria. And these are farmer's markets. Um, this is where you can get organic produce. This is where you can get things that are just a much, much better price. Like right now it's mango season. Thrilled about it. And a good price for mangoes is three kilos for $4. So just to give you an idea, like that's a special price. Otherwise, if you're buying mangoes out of season, you're paying so much more. Like you can easily pay $4 for one kilo. So being mindful of buying fruit that's in season. Papayas are always cheap. Bananas are the cheapest things ever and uh, pineapples as well. Otherwise, if you're looking for more exotic fruit, rarer fruit, make sure it's in season and just be mindful of where you're, sh where you're shopping. Larger grocery stores tend to have not so good quality products. If you go to little fruit stands, it's more local things, it's often fresher. So I don't recommend going to the big grocery store to do your shopping. If this is what you're accustomed to and you wanna come here, then I recommend you consider changing your ways and living in a more relaxed lifestyle where you do go to the farmer's market and you enjoy the process of shopping and speaking with the vendors and encouraging the local people. In general, fruits and vegetables are the most affordable things. And so if you're looking to save, this is where you should focus your attention. I don't eat meat, so I have no idea what the price of meat is. I can tell you in general, uh, getting raw, delicious dairy is definitely worth it and affordable for the most part. Um, Costa Ricans like to eat a lot of beans and rice. So of course these things that are usually grown in Costa Rica are quite affordable. These really simple foods. But if you're looking for something more fancy, cereal for example, especially if it's imported cereal, uh, if your kids are looking to eat their sugary cereals, 
good luck. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of money, so you got to convert them into eating more fruits and vegetables. And of course, it's much healthier. So it's like the healthier you actually uh, become, the cheaper it becomes because you're less dependent on these packaged goods and these imported things that are costing you a lot. And I actually save a lot of money by making my own peanut butter. Peanut butter can easily cost you like $8 for a jar at least. So for non-organic stuff. So this is why I decided to make my own because when I make it, I get a kilo for $7. So then I can make a big, big, big jar of peanut butter for $7 instead of a little jar for that I would buy for eight, nine, $10. I buy kilos of peanuts and then I use my food processor, which I brought down from Canada because you cannot find a food processor in Costa Rica or you can, but they're really bad. That's another thing. <laughs> in Costa Rica, appliances, everything is really cheap quality. So the more you can actually bring down from your own country to here is better because otherwise things are gonna cost you a lot for just the quality price. Uh, appliances are expensive, um, just everything. So um, I brought my juicer, I brought my, I brought my blender, I brought different things and it's worth it, it's worth it. And a lot of ex expats who decide to settle here Maybe not the first time they come around, but when they go back home, they lug a lot of stuff back because that's how you can get quality items. Same for clothes. Don't expect to come here and shop. You can get nice, good quality clothes in the markets that are sold by often expat vendors who are sourcing natural fibers or just good quality clothes. Oftentimes they're handmade or thrifted uh, and refurbished by some vendors that are often actually making a living from this. And so it's a good way to encourage Again, the local economy, instead of encouraging the large companies that are importing cheap things from China. One thing I do appreciate about affordability in Costa Rica is the events in general, um, spiritual gatherings or any kind of conscious event is always quite affordable. For example, at Awake, which is a really popular center in Vita, there's an ecstatic dance every Sunday. So I haven't been to Awake in a while, but I think that the price that they ask for is from 3,000 colonas to 6,000 colonas, so about uh, $6 to 10 or $12. Don't quote me on that though. Um, but in general, events are very accessible. The whole point is to gather community simply to bring people together. And so if you're looking to do activities, it's a really great place to just enjoy the abundance of offerings, especially in the dry season. Of course, in the rainy season, things really die down. And so it becomes a lot harder or just the offerings are a lot, a lot less available. Um, it's surprising how many people leave Costa Rica just to observe the trend to live here past the month of May. Suddenly the markets are completely empty. Suddenly there's way less going on. You see the same people. I mean, you always see the same people, but then it's like really the same people. And the beach just really changes. Of course it has its advantages. It's a slower way of life. It's more just enjoying the present moment. It's more being. Whereas in the dry season, it's a lot of high energy, high of, you know, so many events happening. There's just, there's a lot. So I hope this gives you a rough idea about what it costs to live in Costa Rica and how to save money if you're looking to live here more, more full time on a, on a budget. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And check out my other videos. I'll see you in the next one.